Hospital workers. What regrets do you hear from dying patients? I was a hospice nurse. One of my elderly patients had skin cancer, a huge malignant melanoma on the side of his neck that was growing rapidly. He had been a farmer all his life and never married. One night we were talking and I asked him if there was anything he wished he had done differently in his life. And he thought about it a minute and said he wished he had worn a hat when he was farming. I wish he did too. I love his answer. I hope he's farming in a better place now. With a hat on. I work in a hospital. Whenever someone is at the end of their life, they always just want to be with their loved ones. Any regrets I've heard is always family related. They wanted more time with the people they love. Most people are at peace with things though. People also tend to wish they took their health seriously. I read an essay by a dying woman once. I remember the lines. I want more time with Jason, her husband. I want more time with my kids. She was 51 when she wrote this and died. Her kids were in college or just past. She'd been married about half her life and her husband was about the same age. So a young widower. What you said just reminded me of that. Everyone wants what they can't have, time. He wished he had been a better father to his daughter. He wished they had reconnected. His dementia prevented him from remembering they had reconnected years before and that she visited often. I wish I could have made him aware that he had accomplished his last wish, but he died not really understanding that. I had a patient who I was in the room with when her doctor explained she only had a few weeks to live. I knew her well, spent quite a bit of time talking to her up to the news. The days that followed, she seemed to have accepted she was dying. She lived this beautiful, independent, and successful life. Maybe not money successful but just plain happy. Anyways when I was helping her to the tub on day 10 since receiving the news, she just broke down crying and couldn't stop crying about how much she wished she didn't put her dog down BC they could have died together. Come to find out her dog was on his deathbed too. I guess she put her dog down a few days before going into the hospital. She knew her life was over so she put him down first. She hated herself for it and for the fact she blew the opportunity for them to spend their last moments together. Really heartbreaking to watch. To hear that unfold. She passed early in the morning two days later. I took a couple of mental health days off after she passed and spent some time looking up dogs to adopt and new jobs to apply for. In the ER it's not something most people see coming when they arrive but it's usually the same regret when they are coherent. They all wish their family was there, which sucks even more lately with COVID since family can't come in initially, or they cry out for their so in a panic. It's gotten to the point recently where we tell them so is right here with you. The look of relief on people's faces just hearing that gets me every time. People just want to not be alone at the end. My mom did home health and hospice. My stepdad was very abusive and my mom would take me to work with her to try and protect me. She didn't want to leave him due to religious beliefs. That's a different story. There was an old man. I'd play cards with him. We'd talk about working on the farm we had. He was a nice guy. He figured out I was being physically abused. His health started declining and he couldn't play cards or get out of bed. The last time I saw him, he said he was sorry he wasn't younger and that he couldn't help me. Almost 25 years ago and I still remember him. I remember of this 40 year old patient that I had was dying from breast cancer that spread throughout her body. She was diagnosed with breast cancer 10 years earlier and had a mastectomy. The doctor recommended for her to have a bilateral mastectomy with reconstruction due to high risk of recurrence of cancer. She said that she wanted to keep her breast, a real breast rather than an implant, in case she remarries and will be somewhat whole. She regretted not getting the bilateral mastectomy, if she did. She would not gotten cancer in her remaining breast and dying at such a young age. The patient never ended up marrying after all. A week later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I instantly told the doctor that I want a bilateral mastectomy with reconstruction. I also had an aggressive form of cancer. My doctor kept pushing a lumpectomy which I probably would have gotten before I have heard how much she regretted her decision. I feel that she actually saved my life sharing and opening up with her regret of all time. I worked as an oncology nurse right out of nursing school. I was barely 21 years old, had a patient about my age who was dying of lung cancer. A few hours before he died I sat with him and he was telling me how much he wished that he would have had more time to maybe fall in love, marry, have kids. 
he was so young. He asked me to call his parents and he died shortly after they arrived. It was awful. His regrets were more about the life not lived. Many older patients had some interesting life stories and most wanted to tell them before they died. Most were at peace with the life they lived. Many regretted working so much and not spending enough time with family. Sometimes I feel my bones straining under the weight of all the lives I'm not living. Jonathan Safran Foller. Extremely loud and incredibly close. I did training to be a CNA and we had to work in a nursing home as part of our training. I didn't really get into any deep conversations with the patients there, but I can say this. If you have family in a nursing home please visit with them. It's a sad and lonely place to be. It really is. I'm doing my nursing school clinical in one right now and it's effing sad. On my shift yesterday people asked me to translate for one resident who was agitated and crying in Portuguese. No one could understand her. I went to her room and asked her what she needs. She said she wants to go to bed and sleep. She's alone. Doesn't have her husband. And her kids forgot about her. It's just sad. I'm all alone she said with tears in her eyes. Please visit your family if they're in a nursing home. AEMT here most patients that I see in my ambulance are too sick to talk in these cases but one sticks with me. Mid 40s male called us for chest pain put a 12 lead on and he was in the middle of massive heart attack. For those that know the term he was throwing tombstones. Sad part was he had medical training so he knew that it wasn't good. We were screaming to the hospital he looked me dead in the eye and goes I should have ate that fine cake when I asked what he meant he told me screw what others think if it makes you happy do it. Eat the cake. Pet a squirrel. Take a nap. Sue anyone else it doesn't matter. He crashed shortly after we got to air. Didn't come back. Now at least if I want to do something purely for the fun of it and my wife asks why I want to all I have to say is I want to pet the squirrel. Paramedic but close enough. Made a run on a woman in her 30s for shortness of breath. Her and her boyfriend had just moved into an apartment together. They were fighting over something trivial. Which room to unpack first or something. He thought she was just being dramatic. We transported. She never made it. Went from awake and talking to unresponsive and asystolic. No cardiac activity. In a matter of seconds. They were so caught up in a little argument that they never said goodbye. They never told each other they loved them. She didn't have any last words. And honestly that's even worse. Back when I was a teenager. My brother and I were real close. We would watch scary things together. Ghost adventures. Haunted. A bunch of other cheesy things. He loves running into my bedroom and asking if I wanted to play COD Zombies. Which he totally sucked at. Was a horrible listener. He would have given anything to make everyone happy. When he could. He almost drowned trying to fish out our brother's fishing rod. We convinced him to dress as a woman and flaunt himself on the highway. He loved to make weird a popcorn seasoned with sugar and cinnamon. He loved rescuing spiders. He gave a homeless guy that had his granddaughter his food because they looked hungry. He was a good kid. Every day, I wake up and think about how kind he was. The last thing I told him was he was a piece of sh. It has been almost 10 years, and I will never forgive myself. I was a new nurse, flying solo. We got a call for an incoming trauma. Woman in her 50s involved in a multi-car accident. We were already at the ambulance bay, unsure of the woman's complete condition. She rolled in breathing on her own, but very labored with asymmetrical chest expansion. She was profusely bleeding, had multiple deep lacerations, pupils blown, day recovering most of her, etc. Her vitals were unstable. She was circling the drain. We knew she was on the verge of coding. I was standing near her head, ready to assist in supporting her airway but also providing comfort and doing my best to calm her. The woman looked me directly in the eyes and in a hoarse, labored voice stated, I was angry. I told her I was disappointed in her. She began to cry. Her vitals plummeted. I'm sorry, was the last thing she said before her heart stopped. We coded her, intubated her, performed round after round of ACLS, only to eventually have to call time of death. I still see her face at times. Her eyes filled with more emotional pain than physical. It took much longer and was so much harder to write this than I thought it would be. I've worked in long term care for over a decade. I can't speak for the young. But most often old people regret the things they didn't do. I'm really grateful for YouTube because I came across the hospice part of the site and saw this regret over and over again. 
I'm only 25 and their words of regret have literally shaped my life since about 20 years old. I've proposed to a guy I love, rejected, banged a New York City runway model, called my boss a fatistic head, moved cities because of their advice to go for it. Thanks old folks, at least when I'm in your bed I can always say that I tried it. You'll opened up an adventure for me and I'm so grateful. My mother-in-law, her husband, stepdad to my husband, would not leave her alone in the hospital for one minute. He is a controlling, crazy man. My husband was visiting and somehow she convinced his scrap dad to go take a break. She pulled my husband, her son, close and said, I don't want to be kept alive on machines. Her husband was her power of attorney so my husband had no power. She was kept alive way longer than needed, I think. In the end, she regretted trusting him. I was in a similar situation, but it happened to my sister instead. Basically my mom dropped me off with my brother to relatives in another city. My sister's lungs had collapsed and she was taken to the hospital, and she remained in a coma for 7 months straight and every one the doctors, estranged father, fellow patients, family members, and the nurses begged her to just sign some documents pull the life support plug, and let my sister die in peace. My mother screamed at them and said she would never do that. Eventually the people began to prepare a special kind of body bag and the doctor said they were getting ready to pronounce her dead as things did not look like they would recover. Then suddenly one day my sister came back to life but the doctors couldn't figure out what made her awake from the coma, and they declared it a miracle. This happened about a decade ago. However as a result my mother basically went insane from the mental stress and has now basically isolated herself from society and awaits an oncoming apocalypse and believes that people are attempting to assassinate her. It is chilling to think that I wouldn't have my sister in my life had my mother given in to the pressure and it makes me grateful to look up from typing this comment and seeing her across the room also browsing reddit on her phone but probably about something regarding makeup rather than ask reddit. A little different but I worked in a G lab and we had a much older man late 70s probably maybe late 80s. It's been a while. Come in 4G issues. While doing the procedure we found cancer and it was a death sentence. Super bad and I think he had refused to have a colonoscopy up until this point. The doc said it was horrific we couldn't get past the cancer it was so bad. He said maybe a few months. We finish up and I am at bedside with the patient and doc comes in to talk and family wouldn't believe it. The guy wouldn't believe it. The doc backed down and not once told him how bad it actually was. I was pretty upset because doc basically lied to the family and gave them false hope because they wouldn't stop arguing and he just didn't care to tell them the truth. I still wonder often about what happened to him. If he spent his last days fighting it and wearing himself out or if let himself enjoy his last few months. Colon cancer is horrific. It looks exactly like the word cancer. It's disgusting. It looks alien. Please 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 people get your colonoscopy when you are told. It's not just you you are saving it's your kids who will get screening earlier if they find something in you. But if you don't they'll never know they are at risk. I used to be a nursing student. I decided to drop out in my second year because it wasn't where my heart was. During my placement at the city hospital I got to talking to an older man. He must have been like 88 then. 2010. He was talking about how I look exotic and always complimented my long hair etc etc. I was never threatened or put off by it. One day he told me I looked like the woman he wished he never let go. That he was completely happy about how his life turned out. Loved his family and late wife. But he always thinks about the woman he shouldn't have let go by. Years later. I met a guy at work who ended up moving across the country for work. I remembered this old man and followed my heart. I never let my love get away. I married him this summer. You should always at least try. Even if it doesn't work out. Go for it and find out so you never wonder. I worked in hospice. Top regret was not spending time with family and or lost time due to a family feud. Probably number two was wasting their life with their spouse, for various reasons, when they could have possibly been with someone they loved met a soulmate. Number three was usually not accomplishing a bucket list item such as living in a foreign country. We were not supposed to let people bring their pets in to say goodbye. Other people could have allergies or an untrained pet could poop somewhere. But I always told family members to smuggle in Fluffy in an oversized purse Paris Hilton style. Large dogs were harder but since they were literally emotional support animals at the time, I never told them to leave. 
My grandmother used to be a nurse and she would say I've seen a lot of people through their last days and heard a lot of regrets, but I have never heard anyone coming up to the end wishing they had spent more time working. I don't know what to make of this, but I worked patient transportation for about 4 years so I got to encounter a lot of people. The number one thing I always heard was don't get old. It felt like I'd hear it at least a few times a week if not more often. I won't say much more but hearing that from dozens of different people with different backgrounds who all end up in the same situation, it makes ya think.